All right, guys. So I am going to read this tiny little book. That's my bookmark. Um, it is The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Betrick Potter. And here I go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fair tree. Now, my dear, said old Miss Rabbit, one morning you may go into the field or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there, and he was put in a pie by Miss Gregor. Now run along, and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then Mr. Then old Miss Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread a f and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes, and then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he met but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rack and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was really dreadful, frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into the gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and the shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him with great excitement and implored him to his exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve which he indeed to pop open upon the top Peter. But Peter wrinkled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide him if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps Hidden underneath a flower pot, he began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kerchoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time, and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, unsettling three plants. The window was too small for McGregor, and he tried to off. Oh my God! Tried of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath, trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Always. Oh my gosh. Also, he ha was very damp with sitting in the can. After the time, he began to wander about, going limpency, limpy. Now very fast and looking around, he found a door in the wall, but it was locked. And there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her 
the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pound where Mr. McGregor filled his water can. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now then the tip of her twi tail twitched if it was alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousins, Little Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was M Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along the straight walk behind some black cur currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at the last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up a little jacket of the shoes for the scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home in the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor and the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and the pair of shoes that Peter had lost in that fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him in bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of to Peter, one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime, but Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end.